Just tell me who you are. Well, my name is John Conley, and I uh, appear as a uh, an artist uh, who is doing a watercolor sketchbook of different places, people, and the type things they use as tools and uniforms and everything else. Can you show me, like? Yes, I can. Um, this is for example, really amazing. I think. That, for example, is a. Uh, an officer waiting for the morning officer's call and depicts officers of the militia who came dressed, as another example, dressed basically in civilian clothes with what they had, but uh, and their arms were the same thing. There were uh, all different kinds of muskets and rifles and the calibers may be all different and everything. How do you make these, then? Show me the paper. I thought it was really interesting. That's All right. Uh, this paper, this particular kind, comes in a block. Can, we, can you hold that up? I don't know if you can see that or not. Also. So it's like a, it's like a, just a one big thick piece. There's no, there's yes, no that's right. And then if you do your illustration, you stick a knife blade down in here and peel the top layer off. Throw it in the pile and you're ready with a fresh piece of paper. And I'll be darned. That's and pretty cool. And this paper has been made by this French company ever since 1492. Okay. So it's authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, now can I explain the paint box? Yeah, 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 that'd be great. All right, this is a copy complete with a sliding lid of one that's made by, or was made by Reeves and Company in London, England. And uh, the watercolors come in cake form, and there aren't too many manufacturers of them anymore. And besides that, most of them are called something else now. But these would be the colors they would have used back. These are they... authentic for each one of these names in here. Okay. And uh, briefly, the uh, other interesting thing to me was uh, the brushes that they use. Uh, this is squirrel fur. <laughs> holds, holds a lot of liquid color, but also comes to a fine point for the fine detail you want to do. Now, they shaped a brush, tied it together with string. I hope you can see that. Mm -hmm. And then there was a hollowed out goose quill that they stuck the brushes in one end, a lack of handle in the other, and bound it with wire, copper wire. Now, if you're fast enough to catch a squirrel, you can make them yourself, or you can buy them from Issa Bay of France, yeah. which makes them the same way as they did years ago in the 1700s. Wow. And then you had these other, you had a pencil and some other stuff, right? Uh, they referred to this as a hair pencil. Hair pencil, okay. And then uh, this was what they referred to as a crayon. And it's sort of the forerunner of a mechanic pencil. Mm -hmm. You put your lid, in this case it's uh, graphite, and you can extend it out and sharpen it. That's what I do with this knife. Mm -hmm. Then tighten that up as you use it up. Mm -hmm. And you can have another another one in the other end. Okay, so one gets dull, the other one. That's right, or yeah. it could be a different color. Oh, I see. And okay. uh, then they actually had... This is considered a crayon also, mm -hmm. and it was uh, lead or graphite or um, charcoal in a wooden case like this. Mm. And then uh, when you made a mistake, you had a gummed eraser that's very similar to the um, plain old gummed eraser that you use in art class in grade in high school. <laughs> You don't make very very many mistakes though, do you? When you're doing these? I just oh yeah, uh, these the things I work out on on uh, tissue on vellum. Oh, you on vellum? Okay. Can and you kind of go through some of them just to? And then I finally get down to this is the final positioning I want, mm -hmm. or this is the final positioning I want, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when I do all the detail. Can we see some of these? Can we just kind sure. of go through? Sure, glad to. This is an officer in the militia, and uh, can I, you want me just to run through them? Yeah, just kind of go through, that'd All be right. great. 
Now this is an officer in, without his coat and a regular uh, line. Uh, You've got the, these captions to the side here just explaining. Yes, that's. With the colors uh, and. The colors and the intent is when I get back to my studio in Baltimore, I'll use these for reference and uh, do finished oil paintings. Oh, I see. And, um, the colors, I know how I know what I mixed and the way the colors you get these different things. Oh, I see, okay. Because the oil paints and the watercolors go by the same name. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, one of the camp followers. Followers. She happens to be a, a wife of a lieutenant mm -hmm. in the militia preparing a meal. Uh, these are some wood rites. <coughs> This is one I haven't finished. Um, I got the pencil of it about done, but not quite. These are all shavings from a, him using a draw knife on a piece of wood that's locked in this vice type. Mm -hmm. This shows uh, different styles of glasses. Yeah. Here again, I haven't uh, finished them. Mm -hmm. Different styles of hats. Uh, this uh, shows a couple of reenactors who um, uh, he portrayed an Indian brave, and she was his captive female. <laughs> and uh, here's this shows some uh, uniforms of uh, an officer and a couple of enlisted men. A man cleaning out his uh, musket with hot water out of a tin cup. Now this portrays a Shawnee Indian who came to trade with us. This is some of the these are some of the trade items that he had available. Okay. This one is a uh, backwoodsman. Got a couple too many turkeys, it looks like. Well, that's right. <laughs> you know, the uh, uh, this this one has a beard. Uh, there's another one here has a beard, but that was not too common. Oh, really? Uh, you would think rule, that they all had beards. No, but no. Uh, the rule was that most people were clean shaven, mm -hmm. but maybe did not have a clean shave. Oh, I see. That's why I look like I'm. A day away of having a clean <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, this one was uh, a typical uh, line, state line soldier. The Mitch Army was uh, a regiment was uh, put together by the state of Virginia, and it was not a continental regiment, but a regiment from the state. These are just expressions of different people. Mm -hmm. um, I'll skip on through these. Uh, they did not have any regard for plaids, checks, and whatnot. They were not color coordinated. Oh, I see. Okay. They were not fa fashion face in any way. <laughs> um, this one, for example, portrays. Uh, this was a. Uh, member of a New Hampshire regiment that uh, helped garrison Fort Ticonderoga. And they were called up before they could get them uniforms, so they came in their civilian clothes. Uh, this was a smock that he wore over his good clothes, similar to what I'm doing. And uh, uh, he has a uh, musket that uh, was a brown vest, which was originally a, a British musket. Yeah. On the other hand, you had some people that were real gentlemen, this being from Virginia, uh -huh. uh, in an all-black outfit. He was very coordinated. <laughs> uh, this was actually a uh, proposal, and she accepted, by the way. No, you that's know, good. Yeah, they were I'm glad you married. figured that out. Yeah. Indian Braves, and uh, uh, this 
Brave is smoking a what's known as a pipe hog. I don't know whether I I have one right here. Uh, it was given to the Indians by traders and uh, whatnot. Um, this is a pipe bowl, and uh, you can smoke it. It's bored. No, oh, you're through. kidding. Sounds like a yeah. devil's friend. And you can also use it as a tool. Well, the Indians found another use for it, and that was as a weapon. <laughs> and it made a good one. So I'll skip along here. Here's a typical militia uh, man who is wearing a sash, which uh -huh. indicates he's probably an officer. Uh, he has the left side of his hat turned up in order not to fear with the manual at arms that they do off of the left shoulder oh, and not okay. the right shoulder like they do now. Okay. This sash was often of enough material that if he was badly wounded, he could unfold this thing and use it as a, a, a stretcher to carry him out oh, the field. Oh, okay. really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, last but not least, well, next to last, that's my art studio. <laughs> that's great. Okay. And then uh, last, uh, wow. this is me. That's you? <laughs> On uh, help manning uh, the uh, gunboat Philadelphia, which was part of Benedict Arnold's Navy on Lake Champlain when, okay. he, when he was on our side. And if he hadn't have been such a traitor as he was, and he'd have been killed, say, after this battle or at Saratoga, he probably would have been one of our greatest military heroes. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, unfortunately he developed an attitude. <laughs> Well, that's about, about it, I guess. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all that. All right, you're it. welcome. Thank and you. And I can, you don't mind if I put this up on YouTube or Facebook? No, or that's fine. No, that's okay. fine. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate that. All right. Well.